Welcome to the video Tutorials of Mechanisms by Mechanis Mahler. In this video I will try to explain the working principles of a rocket and a rocket engine. A rocket has four main parts. The first part is the payload. The payload can be anything from a satellite, a warhead, to even a human being for space exploration. The second part is the fuel tank, which is a huge tank filled with liquid, hydrogen or any other type of fuel. The third part is a large oxygen tank, which allows the rocket engine to operate in an airless environment such as space. The fourth and most complicated part of the rocket is the rocket engine. The main parts of the rocket engine are start tank, mixing tank, turbine for power generation for the pumps, fuel boost pump, oxygen boost pump, combustion chamber, throat, nozzle. Let's describe the working details of the rocket engine. During the ignition process, the material inside the start tank creates enough pressurized gas to operate the turbine. The turbine is coupled to the fuel and oxygen pumps. Therefore, the operation of the turbine forces the fuel and oxygen to the combustion chamber by using pumps. Once the fuel and oxygen is mixed in the combustion chamber, it is ignited and the operation of the engine starts. At the same time, a small portion of the fuel and oxygen is diverted to the mixing chamber. Fuel and oxygen mixture is ignited inside the mixing tank to create pressurized gas to power the turbine. The outlet of the turbine is connected to the exhaust pipe to discharge the expanded gases to the environment. This process continues as long as there is fuel and oxygen in the tanks. As many of you may know, rockets work with the same principles as a fire hose. When you hold a fire hose, you will experience push on your body in the opposite direction of the water flow. This push is proportional to the speed and amount of water discharged from the hose. The larger the flow rate or faster the flow speed, the more thrust you will experience on your body. For a rocket, the higher the amount of fuel and oxygen disposed of through the nozzle, the more thrust will be generated for the same exit velocity of gases. The thrust produced by exit gases is also proportional to the speed of the exit gases. The faster the gas flow from the nozzle, the more push it will generate. Now, there is one problem here. We know that to make water flow faster, we have to make the exit hole as small as possible. However, with the rocket engine, the nozzle expands, and the exit area gets more significant to make the gas flow with higher speed. You may think that would reduce the rate of the exit gas flow, but on the contrary, compressible gases do not behave like water. Instead, when the flow area of pressurized gases decreases, its velocity will increase. This process continues until the speed of the gas reaches the speed of sound at which point reducing the area further causes shock waves to be generated inside the nozzle. To prevent shock wave formation and to increase the gas velocity, the area of the nozzle must gradually increase. We call the area where flow speed is going from subsonic to supersonic the throat of the nozzle. This phenomenon may seem bizarre, but it is true. Not shown in this video are the cooling pipes from the fuel pipe circling the nozzle. These pipes preheat the fuel while it's cooling the nozzle. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. If you enjoyed this video and found it to be useful, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. We appreciate your support.